like to welcome a team which has worked together for a whole year uh, to put up a presentation at the Parliament of World Religions on Ava and compassion. Ava Yazad in the Zoroastrian tradition is the archangel of water. And before I go into the program, let me just introduce you to some very, very distinguished people. Firstly, Professor Kavas Kapadia of the School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi. He has been with me on a very long journey of 20 years from when we discovered the Takas of Baruch and he represented us at the UN World Water Congress in Kyoto at the um, uh, ARC, that is the Alliance for Religion and Conservation in Salisbury and at many, many other places. Uh, I have to say thank you, Kavas, for all the work you've done over the years. And of course, he's an executive council member of Parzor. Next, I'm taking you flying across the world to Dr. Behram Pastakya, medical professional, community leader who has mentored three generations, I think now, of young Fezana, that is the Federation of the uh, American Associations, North of American Associations. Uh, Behram uh, is going to be a mentor and he's going to just let the young people speak, but he will come in and he will be there with us because he has some brilliant ideas for how to take this forward. He has been our very important anchor during the POWR presentation. Uh, I then go across to Canada to a freed mystery of uh, Fezana. I think she may be here, we are not very sure because they're very different time zones, but you will be seeing her and uh, it talk to us, uh, at least if not live, you, she will be joining us for the presentation. And then the little one, the little Mat Matab, whom I call her the little Matab, Matab Dastur of Houston, who is a 15 year old girl student who has actually really anchored us all, kept us in control, been very, very firm with our uh, extending too much talking, been very firm about everything that we do in POWR. She's our little dynamo and she's trying to meet us between her car journey to school and going into class. So this is Matab uh, here, uh, if you can see her with the red dupatta. And Matab, I hope you are going to be with us. I'm not sure, but she will be with us a little later. Let me then introduce Dr. Karishma Kuka, neuroscientist from Cambridge. Environmental and religion are her forte. Karishma, can you say hi to everybody, please? Karishma, can you hear me? She's in London and she'll be talking to us live from London and also taking us through a very important presentation where she lays the foundation of what you are going to see in the Zoroastrian philosophy. Uh, after that, uh, Karishma, are you on? Can you just open, uh, unmute and say hi? Okay. Hama Zor, Hama Shobad, everybody. Welcome. We're stronger in uh, purity and stronger in spiritual strength together. Thank you. Uh, Vanshika is, going, is in Singapore. Uh, she was sent off to get her booster shot, but she's going to try and be with us. And uh, she will be doing a presentation and she will be here for the question and answer sessions. And then of course there's me, you see me all the time, so I don't have to say anything more. But I do want to give you a little story of how orality is the core of everything that Parzor has done and frankly is an immensely important part as we now recognize, not just in anthropology and cultural studies, but in memory. We, we call it memory, we call it the whole idea of smriti and shruti, the voice, the speech and the mind. And that is what started this whole project off. When 
my father, my late father and I were traveling in Gujarat and we went to Bharuj, the question that would be asked to us was in Gujarati, and I'll, I'll translate, Tame takanu pani piso ke bizleri mangso. We said, what? Uh, I mean, what is takanu pani? Now, we are a family which has grown up, uh, obviously, in India, you in the old days, you had to take a lot of care. Even now, you have to take a lot of care. So we drank boiled and filtered water. And obviously, if you could get bizleri in the villages or in the small towns, we even carried bizleri with us. And uh, then they said, nay, 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 taka no pani taddan saaf che. Taka water is absolutely pure. And we discovered this amazing Zatushti system of water harvesting. Uh, it is from the Iranian tradition where water, Ava Yazad, is so revered. Water, the waters of life are what we all worship anywhere we are. We worship them, we revere them, just as we care for earth, we care for water. And from there, we went on a journey where then we sent a NGO called Development Alternatives who took samples from some takas which had not been emptied and cleaned for 10 years, because it's very difficult to empty and clean 25,000 gallons of water. The Takas have survived earthquakes because of their incredible structure, which is actually the, the arch of the Persian uh, assassinate dynasty. They have the Chartak, a square and with an arch on top. And then a uh, development alternative sent us a report which says that the water of the Taka is purer than mineral water. And they gave us exactly all the proportions. It's a brilliant system. Anyway, that is in the past, but please look up our website, www.unescoparzor.org. And uh, if Matab, if you could share the links over here, we also have a Google Cultural Institute uh, exhibition on AVA, which actually Vanshika has created. And y'all can look at that also on our GCI, Parzor GCI channel. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a long and very interesting journey. Uh, before I hand over to Karishma, let me just tell you how we came together. Behram and I have known each other for many decades. And the whole point was, that we've been wanting to work together and the Parliament of World Religions was a perfect opportunity. Thanks to this 15 year old child, Mata. She brought us together with the mentorship of Behram and she kept us together this exact time. This is the recording. Have you done your homework? Have you changed your, your uh, slides? Uh -uh, it's not all right this way. And she has the honesty of a 15 year old. We would hesitate to say, uh -uh, I don't like this. But she was absolutely upfront about everything. And with that, we made a presentation and we realized that that should not stop at the presentation. We need to make the AVA project, which Fezana has started and which Delzin Irani will be talking to us about. Delzin Irani is a very important uh, uh, lady who has done the actual logo and all the publicity for Fezana's wonderful uh, AVA project. And she will be talking to us about the inspiration that came to her. And for those of you who do not know, she is the daughter of Yazdi Tatra, which I only discovered recently. And Yazdi has done so much work for the community with all his absolutely honorary work that I think he too needs to be given a huge credit for all the work he's done putting us together. So with that, may I hand over to Karishma, Dr. Karishma Kuka of London and let her take over. Thank you. Welcome everybody, Hamazor, Hamashobad, which really means together we are stronger in spirituality and in Ashoi. Ashoi means purity and righteousness. 
The Parliament of World Religions was a very special place where we came together, all of us around the world, to bring a very special theme of supporting life. And for this, we are gratitude to everyone, our priests and elders, my parents for their knowledge, our team for their support and the organizations that have nurtured me with compassion. And this nurturing is a property of water, which people imbibe into themselves and bring out as a complex of spentar, mighty compassion and hurvata. Therefore, it's a collaborative project and ongoing, and we are looking to continue to build this fellowship. It's an intergenerational project, which timeless wisdom from Asho Zarathustra and the faiths with current knowledge form solutions in timely ways. And in the Yenge Hata, we do say in the Zoroastrian faith, we venerate the good actions of people, which are taken with righteousness. Asho Zarathustra, the prophet, gave us the five gathas, the songs of revelation from the Avasta. In the very first gatha, it is said very clearly, now I pray in humble adoration. And you will hear this in my mother's voice in a moment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mommy. My mommy is Jaru. Therefore, the clarity has been given by Asho Zarathustra that with the good wisdom of the mind, may we take righteous action to please the soul of all creation. This comes together with all our actions in the Zoroastrian faith so that we take action that benefits all. And like rivers coming together in a confluence to sustain life, we have all come together to take this action. Gratitude to all the elders, the teams, so that we nurture each other and nature so that our sense of well-being increases and we can have value, add value, and help people feel valued. In the Zoroastrian Daina, the religion, being a caregiver and utilizing resources in moderation with wisdom so that we progress together in a fellowship while removing differences is very important and being committed with integrity. The words in the regular daily prayer are fraspai o kedram, removal, differences and moving forward. Nidhas natyashen and kwaitvatatam, being dedicated. We seek to imbibe the beneficent sustaining characteristics of Ahura Mazda which are represented by all the elements of nature. And this helps us teach children and pass on this tradition. In this picture on the right, which is a picture of the Yasna ceremony, one can see all the elements of nature, starting with the good mind, represented by something by with milk, and moving on through the creation, as I will explain. And this is beautifully demonstrated in the book Ethics and rituals mingle in a Zoroastrian ceremony at the Yasna, Ava, a living tradition of reverence by Dr. Shayanas Kama. You see, Ravan Shad Mavedas uh, Sahib Asfandiarji Dada Chinji here, with Ervad Mavid Sahib Adil J. Bhesanya here from the Pazor archives. Thank you, Mata, for giving us these pictures. These creations, driven by the progressive mentality, allow us to develop wisdom in the light of the good mind and truth, to deal with the world through desirable power, with benevolence and devotion, to perform acts of good deeds with perfection, 
sustaining forever to bring about a renovation in the world called Frasho Kereti, progress with righteousness through fulfilling deeds of action. These creations of the animal world, the fire, the metals, the earth, water, and plants are representing the qualities of Mazda, the human being, the good mind, Bahumana, truth and purity, Asha Bahishta, desirable power, Kshatravaya, benevolence and devotion, Spenta Armanti, perfection, Purvata, which is represented by water, so that we achieve Amerita, that which sustains forever. And these are beautifully described in the Gathas, in the Gatha called the Spentomainu Gatha by Ashur Zarathustra. Aura Mazda, therefore, is like energy that transforms into every aspect of life. Every outlet of mind penetrates onto all seven regions of the world, is said in the Ardha Visura Naish Nyaesh, which is a litany unto water. Thus, Aura Mazda is seen as a friend of human beings by Ashur Zarathustra. Friend as Freya. Fravardigan is the time where we invite the Fravashis, the essence of all living creatures, of all creatures indeed, into a physical world in fellowship and friendship, so that we achieve Frasho Kereti, the moving forward with righteousness and action to renovate the world, as Asho Zarathustra says, the good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. As Mabit Saheb Meherban Firuzgari has taught me, the meeting points of all rivers are like the meeting points of the mind, the Hanja Mana, harmonized mankind. The good of all is brought about with a universal concept in this Moti Haptan Yasht, so that we bring about intellectual, social, economic, and ecological benefits so that we progress together and we build knowledge to lead to wisdom and good actions. And these good actions are key to the Zoroastrian faith because we seek to be a vastaren, a caregiver in the Ahunavairya prayer. And in the Yenge Hatam, we venerate these good actions of the celebrated people who's, who are adding value and building integrity. But science is also linked in the Zoroastrian Dena, integrated into the prayers as I see it. For example, in the 101 names of the all divine energy, we say Parvanda, connected with everybody. Adar Namgar, the transmuter of fire into water. Bad Namgar, the transmuter of air into water. And this continues till we reach a point where we say Avza, helps in progress. And Nasha can reach everybody equally like the rain that falls. It is up to us to respond to the rain to bring about bounteousness. It's also linked to other yasatas, tir and govad, rain and wind. But what we really see is the whole of the water cycle is represented in these names of Ahura Mazda. And as my mother led, uh, led a team to the Parliament of the World Religions also and talked on air, even the air cycle is represented in the names of Ahura Mazda. Thus, energy is often seen related to the Zoroastrian faith as we see or relate Zoroastrians as revering fire. But in reality, we are revering Ahura Mazda through the fire, through energy, because fire is called Atharsh, and Atharm is that which transforms. And yes, in the 101 names, we have Adar Badgar, the transformer of air into fire into air. And we know this from science because we do electrolyze water to generate clean energy, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen, which is so important now. We realize this in COVID times. Thus the energy from nature leads to a clean, cleaner, greener, fairer and more sustainable future. And we see this requires water, not just to grow plants and produce things like hydroelectric biogas, but also to bring about technological advancement hydroelectricity. And what about the energy of the mind? So in the Zoroastrian faith, we link shining, understanding, happiness, and success. And in the Gathas, in Yasna 43.1, it is said, happiness comes to one who brings happiness to others. 
So let us fire up our mind, which is said to be our protection in the Kemna Mazda prayer, along with the fire of Ahura Mazda, because that reduces stress, benefits immunity, gives us good brain activity, our dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, help us to adapt to change, converting challenge to opportunity so that we shine light on our parts as we say in the Atashniyas. We listen, reflect, and decide for good action in the Yasna 30.2, and we form people with purity and devotion who take action to keep the faith, to build the fellowship, as we say in the Aidema issue. This hope and compassion and working for emotional resilience and caring for nature is taught by Asho Zarathustra because it helps us convert challenge to opportunities, among other things, and take prayer with action so that we bring joy in the revolving world. Yes, not just all the elements of nature, but also the concept of the world being revolving is in the Gathas and Yastaha 44.6. So like water brings about a greener, more beautiful place, gives us energy and sustains life. For after all, we are about 80% water. The world is about 70% water. This justice, equity, sharing comes through peace and good-mindedness as Ashur Zarathustra depicts in the Gathas. And we know today that it is the people with the least resources who actually have to bear the greatest brunt in the world when things get tough or when nature strikes. When we remove pollution, we are really healing and restoring. And indeed, water, which is represented by Adda Visur Anahita or Ava, helps us clean. The word anahiti means purity that removes pollution or ahiti. And in the Abhanyash, waters are called upon to heal. And on Avanupara, which you can see in this photograph, courtesy of the Parzor Foundation, we see people of the Zoroastrian faith venerating water on this special day. In the Parahoma ritual, which is part of every yasna ceremony, the healing extract of the homa or the ephedra plant is pounded in a cold press with goat's milk with water that is first extracted from the well of the agyari or the fire temple. And then at the end of the ceremony, this purified, filtered and prayed upon water is poured back into the well to replenish the groundwater and share with all. In this photograph, one can see the respected Mabit Saheb Asfandiyaji Dada Chanji, who has recently passed away, and Mabit Saheb Adil Gaisanya, putting the water back into the well. Thus, compassion in action towards holistic perfection is represented intrinsically by water. And I thank the AVA project, the new AVA project, and the continuing AVA project for this wonderful work which will develop around the world. Together, Parzor, Fezana, ZTF, and Bahumata, together with all of you, can take this forward. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaru. Thank you so much, Karishma. And now, may I request Matab from Spain. I I'm so sorry. I, re I forgot to introduce our most important person without which none of our Friday forums would happen. Mata Birani, who is running our Friday forum for the past two years, sitting in Barcelona and being the most spectacularly quiet and efficient human being I have ever seen. And she never loses her temper, which is very rare in a Parsi. <laughs> okay, Mata, can you please show one shika of Singapore, Parzo researcher, a student of mine from LSR, and now doing her PhD on water management in NUS, Singapore. Thank you, Dr. Kama, and welcome all. Thank you, Karishma, for connecting Zoroastrian religious philosophy and practice with environmental consciousness. No more can the need for exploring these connections be more pressing than at a time when statistics tell us that nearly 6 billion people will suffer from clean water scarcity by 2050. As announced by the World Water Development Report, this gigantic figure 
comes from a wide range of factors from an increase in demand, rising pollution, and a rising human footprint. The rainfall patterns across the globe warn us further. On your screen, on top, you see projections for average rainfall in a year. Especially in the mid-latitude areas, you see fewer dots suggesting that our average annual precipitation will go down. Finally, and here's where the paradox begins, there's also a general agreement among climate models that the future will bring an increase in heavy precipitation across most of the world, including in the mountain regions as shown in the model below. So what's the catch? How do we make sense of this contradiction? Put simply, we're likely to see more, in fact, catastrophically dense rains, but for shorter durations, calling for measure or technology that helps us either to direct this rain as groundwater recharge or effectively repurpose rainwater as portable drinking water. We see the effects of these precipitation changes coupled with unplanned development, where we're not able to make the rain percolate to the ground. The most recent example of this is when heavy rains triggered landslides and floods in Mumbai in July this year itself. This is not new. Playing with the Western Ghats along with record rainfalls led to widespread flooding in Kerala in August 2018. And the story is not just about India. This is an image from Germany this year. Climate modelers have postulated that Europe's flood pattern is changing with increase in autumn and winter rainfall that is likely to increase flooding. We believe that the problem is not just a problem of technology, but a problem that requires reflecting upon our relationship with water. We believe the time is ripe to remind ourselves of how culturally connected our knowledge about water is. The ubiquitous water jar that we use today is very well an invention by travelers in high temperature deserts in this picture from Yaz in Iran so that it was possible to cross distances without dying of thirst. Today we carry water wherever we go, but have forgotten the knowledge that allows us to do so. Perhaps a way out of the condition that we have arrived at lies in reminding ourselves how some of the systems that we have deployed over the years need to be revived, contextually adapted, or even reinvented. What you see on the right-hand side is the aerial view of Baghe Shahzadeh in Mahan, showing an integrated system of the Kanat, a fine example of the ability of human beings to work with their surroundings to carry water from an underground channel or tunnel to their villages above. In 2015, as part of the Everlasting Claim program curated by Parzor Foundation, my interview with the Zoroastrian High Priest of Iran, Mubidi Mubidian Ferozkari, sparked my interest and opened my worldview to the underground, not being an inert, taken for granted space, but one that ensures that the water or the flow of water over long distances uh, takes place in predominantly arid yes. On your screen is his quote and his words that tells about the context-specific conditions under which the Kanat thrived. Effectively, the ability of human intelligence to work with the underground is not simply a modern phenomenon. As noted in Parzor's study of oral traditions and life histories in Gujarat and Iran, skilled workmen would dig and engineer subterranean irrigation canals or aqueducts. The underground was not an inert space, but one that was constantly acted upon to make life above it bearable or even better. The Kanats were also integrated to the storage practices of avanbars or water reservoirs surrounded by the badgirs or wind towers at regular intervals for cooling effects. When the Zoroastrians landed in Gujarat, in India from the 8th century onwards, the Parsis of southern Gujarat, particularly Bharuj, adapted to the Indian climate and learned of the potential of rainwater harvesting after the monsoons. Between 1999 and 2001, Parzor did extensive field recordings around Gujarat. At Bharuj, the project stumbled upon the Taka system of water harvesting, which is still functional in a few houses. Continuity in this tradition of wide networks of canals called Ghanat or Kanat or Kariz from Iran is observed in the Taka system of Gujarat. 
The Parsis, following the original ideas of the Bad Peers, created a system of water harvesting for drinking purposes, but they also used and deployed special techniques of filtration. The system comprehensively came to be known as the Taka system. The Taka being the cistern where the water would eventually reach after three layers of filtration. Let me explain this in the next slide. In this slide, you see two different types of flat roof in Gulshan, the Jambusarwala house and the oasis or Parsi ward in Bharuj. Taka is a system where you collect rainwater when the rain falls on a flat roof. The water that is collected from the roof comes to the pipe to the kundi of the Taka. This kundi is the small place where all the filtrations are done. There's a large boya or a colander that is placed here. There is a muslin cloth that is placed on top of it to add to filtration. The cross section that you're seeing here is one that is operated by Rohin Rohintan and Farida Jambu Sarwala in their house, Gulshan in Bharuch, hosting potentially the largest taka that we came across in our studies. There's also an outlet pipe when we do not want to clean anything or we just want to drain out the water, this pipe is open so that the water does not go inside the taka. The pipe that takes the water to the taka is at least above six inches above the floor of the kundi. This pipe too is laid with a copper net. Very minute holes are there in it. From this net, the water finally goes inside the taka underground. The taka is made of chisel blocks of stone in lime mortar, lined and made waterproof by the curry, a mix of lime and alum that acts as a crystalline disinfectant and a sealing agent. These images are rather old, but they tell us that the opening of the hatch ensures ventilation in such a way that direct sunlight never enters the taka, further limiting any bacteriological growth, ensuring that water is portable and fit for drinking. If you look at the cross-sectional drawings made by Professor Kavas Kapadia, apart from providing drinking water, since the roof of the taka creates the floor of the house, they also keep the building cool throughout the year. Effectively, what you have is water that has no bacteriological growth in it, is fit for drinking, and also is a form of geoengineering that reduces the heat concentration in the house and keeps it cool. We are also aware that the revival of any system in contemporary times must acknowledge change. Our environments have changed and so should our ability to adapt. The possibilities opened up by a system must be acknowledged as their limitations. The Taka as a system must be constructed in those locations where the groundwater is not very close to the surface level. This also means that this is a system that is excellent for arid regions or regions that receive high bursts of seasonal rainfall for a short duration of time. We would also like to point your attention to keeping in mind the kind of built environment that must be borne in mind. As the diagrams show, only a certain kind of a built form which can accommodate the area taken by the, ta by the tank is viable for this system. However, Equally promising in this limitation lies our ability to foster collaborations in spirit of making best use of the rains as and when they come our way. We now know of government schools in Rajasthan which take the rainwater from large rooftops into an alternative storage setup such as overhead surface tanks after filtration. If they can adapt the taka, so can universities, neighborhood commons, government buildings, hotels, malls, or any building where there can be a room for a tank and a spirit of fellowship to take care of the system along with the checks and balances. Thank you so much, Vanshika. And I'm so happy to say that Matab has reached her school and she's also with us. And so is Afrid Mistri. Welcome to both of you and we'll be discussing things with you very shortly. Uh, can you please play the film, uh, Mata? Thank you.
UN standard is that if a country falls short of 1700 cubic meters of water per capita per year then you are entering a danger zone and India is very close to that water starved situation. Let's look at groundwater. As you know, India is divided administratively into blocks. Around 60% of the blocks are in the dark zone. In India, water is sacred. Its rivers are revered as holy, bestowing blessings. Indian cultures as also the Zoroastrian culture, we believe that water is life. Water is not only life-giving, water is itself life. But the awareness of water as a resource comes with Zoroastrians who come from a desert part of Iran, years then Kerman, and water is very, very precious there. The weather was very, very dry, where the water was, would evaporate and the system that they evolved over a period of time was that of a kanath. So, in Yaz, they, in uh, very olden times, uh, they have developed the uh, aquadust or the, uh, what are called the kanath system. Uh, these are uh, underground uh, irrigation systems. Uh, quite uh, deep, sometimes uh, 30 to 40 meters underground. Now, if you have a village here, and if somebody detects a, a underground tunnel of water, channel of water, which is a kilometer or two kilometers, sometimes even five kilometers away, then the most common thing to do would be to bring that water to your village. And in order that this water does not become stale and begin to stink, they would they would ventilate it with bath beads, with wind towers. When the Zoroastrians came to India, they brought along from Iran the system of water harvesting. The Parsis in India adopted the Kanat system of Iran to develop the Tanka system in India. Tanka is a system where you collect rain water. When the rain falls, automatically the roof gets clean. The water of rain gets filtered two or three times in their own primitive way. The entire water that is collected from the roof comes to the pipe to the kundi of the taka, that is the small place where we have all filtrations done. We have a large boya, it's a copper vessel with holes that is also having a malmal cloth. That is the second thing. You, we have one outlet pipe. When we do not want to, we want to clean anything, we just open that pipe and let the water flow out and not inside the tata. Now, the pipe that is going inside the tata is at least six inches above the floor of that kundi. So that even after all these filtrations to, through all these things, if there is any residue or anything that will reside in the kundi, and we can always drain it out anytime we want to. Then we have a huge pipe that will take water in the tanka. Now on that also, we have a complete uh, copper net very 
contain very minute holes are there and from that net the water goes in a very clean very hygienic way and very fact that we our family has been drinking water from our tanka for more than a century clearly indicates that it's good pure water we don't warm the water we don't filter it and we drink it no stomach problems or anything are there it is absolutely clean the british broke down our you know community structures so as to overpower them and uh, that uh, you know ultimately made people dependent upon the state for water and uh, our traditional systems got neglected because pipe water supply was made available or irrigation canals were there but uh, you know that led to the neglect of uh, the traditional systems many of which were community level many were individual level also and uh, now that we are again facing the crisis so there is a need to uh, recall our ancient wisdom and uh, revert to those systems to the extent that uh, at least we can you know surmount the crisis and i think uh, there is plenty which can be done even at the individual level and that may involve uh, you know the very uh, basic architecture of our dwelling units there is still time to revive this and if it is not revived it will just be sort of lost for one thing i think we can have a small kind of a handout educating the people that listen this is a system where you don't depend on the on the municipality or the government to give you water and in those 100 hours that it rains in your area you make an arrangement and you get your year's quota of water but expecting people to straight away fall for it and uh, take it up uh, will be a little difficult so perhaps we can illustrate this by having it in some of the buildings it's exactly like you know solar uh, panels which uh, people are not very much uh, comfortable with so you start with the government buildings that listen our building has solar panels you can also have it and it's not all that difficult it can be you know it's a it's a matter of fighting at two three levels one is the social acceptance the second is the economic uh, acceptance it can be uh, subsidized you could be given certain incentives so on so forth and the third one is purely from the environment point of view as to what would be your contribution to saving a very precious resource thank you mata kavas uh, could you please unmute and kavas and beram if you would like to just bring in your points over here one as a professional uh in the field of architecture and one as a person who is very close to the environment kavas and beram i hand it over to you thank you dr kamla as uh, you have seen uh the the whole idea of conserving water has never been so important as it is now it has become a global problem and uh, uh i have been uh, involved with you with this uh, taka project for a very long time but i am now beginning to realize that uh, you know we need to change our approach to communicating the idea of water to the world and i think we should be able to use religion and religious teachings which are so common i mean if most of the religions uh, if they uh, if they all uh, uh, confine if they all come to a point they all talk about environment and in some form or the other they all talk about saving and conserving our environment and uh, i think uh, zoroastrian religion as karishma has very beautifully pointed out and it's it's recorded in so many of the scriptures uh we uh, revere water uh, 
so many other uh, cultures do the same we think water has life we 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 don't uh, disturb water at night we don't cross water we go around it and water has a birthday and uh, so water is life giving and it has it's like a tree it it has branches a lake a river a, a water body it has points from where it is fed into and it has points where it overflows and as long as this connectivity remains water remains alive what we are witnessing today in city after city in place after place is that this connectivity is cut off the water begins to die the lakes our lakes and water bodies have become polluted and once they become polluted water which is actually life giving becomes life threatening and then gradually that water body dries away leaving behind uh, uh, desolate and dry land and cumulatively this leads to the wrath of nature that we are facing so very simply put there is there is so too much of data available which goes into so many millions of people so many billions of gallons and these millions and billions are figures which are very difficult for people to grasp the simple fact is that look nature is giving you this resource it is giving it to you for a very short time do something about it save it put it in a bank and that bank is ataka or better still you put this water into the womb of mother earth by water harvesting and if we all listen to this we may be able to save a very large part of what would otherwise be a total waste because almost 80 to 90% of the water goes back to the uh, to the sea and this situation is going to get worse for two reasons one because the climate is undergoing drastic change we are going to see more and more rains flash floods and secondly because because of the increasing cities and towns we are actually developing more hard surfaces so this runoff is going to happen and it's going to happen very fast so i think let's come back to our roots let's come back to common sense let's get back to the power of religion and to study as to how we can take the best advantage of water save it conserve it and be true to our religious beliefs thank you thank you kavas beram would yeah. you like to come in please thank you yes uh, uh, thanks for this opportunity to speak and thanks uh, shernas for organizing this beautiful webinar very happy to be part of it i couldn't agree more with what kavas kapadia just said 80% of the world's population believe in some kind of religion the united nations has this program of sustainable development goals to be achieved by the year 2030 civil society has a role people like us non state actors so do businesses so do religions and the commonality of our ancient wisdom if we can harken back to the idea that in ancient iran they had developed a technology which helped people become prosperous if we can harness that wisdom and apply it to our present day world uh, i think it would make a contribution for me it has been a journey of joy to participate with mata Vastu and uh, Vispi Kasad from Nasari and uh, Kavas Kapadia over all these uh, months of preparation. Afrid Misri from Toronto, who is the co-chair of the Fezana United Nations NGO Committee, has been instrumental in putting us all together, and uh, we look forward to hearing from her in this webinar and her comments subsequently. So, thank you for the time. i'm willing to collaborate with anyone who wishes to take this idea forward the presentation at the parliament of the world's religions is only a footstep on a long journey which may take 10 20 30 years but the beauty of it is that we have an intergenerational 
uh, tie up here and it's a global tie up and if all of us come together in the ancient wisdom of india vasudev kutumbakam the entire universe is one family let's work together thanks for the time thank you bairam uh, afreed can you just unmute and say hi or we play your or we play your uh, video first and then we can uh, talk to you afreed are you here anya hi 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 good to see you we really woken you up in the middle of the night sorry uh, but i'm so happy you're here and we have to thank you for pushing this along and for the the journal fezana journal which you are editing which is based around the theme of the environment and now we'll just play your your little clip and then of course i know there are lots of questions here already so we'll wait for you to take the questions thank you hello everyone my name is afreed mystery and i'm from toronto canada and i'm here to tell you about the fizana aba project we started this project in january 2021 and we had over 185 volunteers across the globe sign up to care for the creation of water at the very first meeting we realized that this project will not just be about water and achieving the UN sustainable development goals on water but it also became very clear that we were creating a learning community where we started learning from one another for example Dr Necklin Pithawala who is a botanist joined us from India and he was telling everyone that when a river dried up you should plant certain types of trees to raise the water levels and to bring the water and bring the river back to life there are two examples of this in india on the west coast and the east coast and this prompted us to take ideas during the first meeting and create subgroups and that's how the water and trees subgroup was formed because we realized that trees and water are so closely related At this time, somewhere in California, a 12-year-old girl was listening to Dr. Pithawala because her mom joined the call to see what the Aba project was all about. Little Parina has heard this story, and since she's an artist, the next day she painted a beautiful scenery of water and trees. At the first meeting, we realized we had many young volunteers like Parina's Our group has a wide range of ages starting with an 8-year-old girl from Texas to an 80-year-old author from Australia. With so much diversity, it was decided that we should host a family paint night and have Parinas instruct the kids and families on how to paint a scenery with trees and water. So we did this on June 5th of this year. and during the painting breaks we had a group of teenagers around 14 to 16 year olds teach families about water scarcity water importance conservation and how electricity is made from water since then the educating the kids group and the educating the community subgroups have been really busy coming up with resource material that can be used to teach kids and adults about water. To access this free material, please go to our website at fizana.org. That's f e z a n a.org. On the right side of the page, you will see a menu. Click on resources and when that page loads look for titles to do with water and download that material for free. Please share this with young kids and family and friends and make them aware of the environment. If you would like to learn more about the Aba project, please go to the website fizana.org/theaba-project. Thank you for listening. And if you wish to connect with us over email, our email address is avaproject@fizana.org. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Afrid, and thank you very much for being with us over here. There are many, many questions. Uh, is Delzine in any way possible awake and with us today? Otherwise, we'll just play her little video, which is very interesting, and then I'll we'll conclude with our young Mata. Hi, everyone. I'm Delzin. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it would have been lovely to be live here with all of you, but it's a little too early where I live in California, and hopefully, as you watch this, I'm tucked in. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to send this video in advance and show you how I built the AVA logo. So let me jump right into it, um, talking a little bit about the AVA project first and then how I built the logo. So the AVA project is an international project, as you all know. And the objective of the AVA project was to bring Zoroastrians together and create a learning community where we learn from each other and we also contribute to take care of you. Matab, it's frozen. Sorry, it's frozen. Matab, can you hear me? Be live here with all of you, but it's way too early where I live in California. And hopefully, as you watch this, I'm tucked in. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to send this video in advance and show you how I built the AVA logo. So let me jump right into it, um, talking a little bit about the AVA project first and then how I built the logo. So the Yama project is an international project, as you all know, and the objective of the AVA project was to bring Zoroastrians together and create a learning community where we learn from each other and we also contribute to take care of the environment. So uh, the concept being coming together and building something where uh, we're taking care of the environment. Um, my initial thought process was to use droplets of water as you can see here a drop of water is a great graphic element it's simple it's straightforward and it stands for almost all the bodies of water that you can possibly think of so the concept was a single droplet of water and for the color and the font Here's what we did. So I used blue and various colors of blue and we took the gold from the Fizana logo. Um, and for the font, um, we used an absolutely simple, honest, you know, stand up font, nothing fancy, nothing too wavy. But if you do notice, there's this negative space that's formed by this font, which is really beautiful. Like if you see it in the actual logo, you'll see that little wave over here. It's very subliminal. You have to really look for it. But I think it really represents what AVA stands for. It's very honest and um, the aim is, it reinforces that aim, right? It's not too fancy and flowy. Uh, it's very straightforward and elegant and does the job. So that was the color scheme and the font. And then we moved on to the logo sketch. The logo sketch, um, we went through a few iterations, but I think what was really appealing about uh, the shape was that the water droplets not only depicted the different bodies of water, but uh, they also come together and uh, they depict a globe, um, you know, showing that the AVA project is an international project. And they also stand for the different countries, cities, and individuals who contributed to the project or are contributing to the project. Um, there are many large groups which are doing work together. There are many small groups, there are individuals. So from all parts of the globe, different people are coming together and working on this project. So that's what all the circles in the AVA project logo stand for. 
and uh, the gold specs didn't uh, of course stand for Fizana. So that was a little bit about Thank you very much, Delzin. Uh, I beg your pardon, I called her Delzin Irani. I was a bit confused. She's Delzin Tatra Choksi. So I have to make that very clear. Thank you, Delzin. And I hope next time we'll have a, I don't know how we can ever work out a time which suits us all. But since we have Matab over here with us, Matab Dastur, she's in school. But can you speak to us, Matab, before we end with your very passionate appeal to the world you started it all can you can we can you uh, can we see you please yes so can you hear me yeah hi you're in class okay yeah. that's great Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your teacher allowing you to bunk the first period and be with us. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you got involved? That's the main question. Okay. So I think that I got involved mainly because of the news and the media clashing with the Zoroastrian tenets that I've been raised with. So, you know, when I, my both, my brother and my father are priests, so we're a religious family, and we've always been taught to respect things. You respect not only living things, but also non-living things, right? You don't throw cash, you don't kick your school books, you don't kick anything, actually. You respect the earth where you live because it's giving you everything you need to live. Without it, we can't live. And so I think when the news and the media, when I saw what the news and the media was saying, for example, I'm in Texas. So in California, wildfires burn millions of acres of land yearly. And we hear about the California coast reducing whole houses literally falling off their land because of the water. And so I think when those two combined, and then when I heard about Fizana, the AVA project initiative, I knew it was something I had to do. Right? As my duty as a human being who lived on Earth, I had to do something so that the future generations wouldn't have to you know, scrounge for water every day. And so I think ultimately that is what led me to join and to try and make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just play your video and then I'm throwing the floor open because there are lots of questions which we need to answer. Your home, your school, your community center and your favorite restaurant are all located on Earth. Your family, your friends and you live on Earth every single day from the moment you wake up on Friday to the moment you wake up on Saturday, you breathe air. Air that comes from the oxygen produced by trees on Earth. Every single day, you drink water produced by the Earth. You eat food produced by the Earth. These are necessities. Without these three things, we humans are incapable of surviving. It simply is impossible. So then why do we pollute the Earth? Why do we throw plastic bottles in the oceans and cans on the road? Why do we suffocate the earth if it is giving us everything we need to live? Why are we killing the one thing that is keeping us alive? According to the World Water Development Report, 6 billion people will suffer from water scarcity by 2050. The projected population of the world in 2050 is supposed to be nearly 10 billion. This means by 2050, about three-fifths of the global population, over half of the global population, will not have access to clean, drinkable water. Let that sink in. My name is Mata Bidastur, and I'm a 15-year-old girl from Spring, Texas, a small suburb of Houston. All throughout my life, Zoroastrian tenets have been ingrained into me. Now, they're a part of me. I have learned that you must respect all living and non-living things. You shouldn't kick your school books, 
and you shouldn't throw your plastic straw wrapper in the grass. Simultaneously, I have grown up in a time where the world seems to be crying in pain. For as long as I can remember, the news has always had a new report on the environment. Wildfires burning hundreds of thousands of acres of land, fossil fuels creating a carbon footprint nearly too large to reverse, water running out and millions dying because of it. When these two things came together, my Zoroastrian upbringing and the news both constantly filling my ears, I decided that I wanted to make a change. I wanted to change the world so that future generations did not have to see the world in so much suffering. Thus, I joined the Ava Project, an excellent initiative by Fizana focused on encouraging Zoroastrians around the world to contribute towards taking care of the environment. From there, I was introduced to Shernas Gama, and then Kava Skapadya, Karishma Koka, Vanchika Singh, and Dispikasad. A multitude of diverse, intelligent people from all over the world with the same goal that I had, making the environment better. I was gifted with the incredible opportunity to lead these amazing people along with the guidance of Afrid Mistri and Beram Pastakya to present at the Parliament of World Religions. Together, we presented a successful session on the importance of water in Zoroastrianism, ancient as well as more contemporary systems to conserve water and get it to those living in arid places and the importance of reviving these systems. In the future, I would like to continue with the Ava project and continue in my efforts to make sure the world only gets better. But I cannot do this alone. I need the help of all my fellow youth from around the world. Now I know you have school and work and everyone is busy. Sometimes sitting down to watch an episode of Friends on the Couch is more appealing than working towards a better future. But I have found a way to do both. I have found a way to go to school and do my homework, but also volunteer in my community and hang out with my friends. And it only took one thing, the will, the want. I want to do well in school, so I study. I want to enjoy and have fun, so I find the time to. I want to send books around the world, so I form a nonprofit. I want to make the world a better place for the future, so I try my very best to. If I can do it, me, Mata from a small suburb in Texas, so can you. I need every youth, younger and older, to join me in saving the world we live in to stop the steady disintegration of the world as we know it today. I mentioned before and I'll mention it again, over half of the global population will not have access to potable water by 2050. That's in less than 30 years. That means within two generations, possibly even one generation, people will be dying from dehydration. It means kids your age, will spend their days looking, begging for water while their internal systems fail because of a lack of water. If children are going to school, if children are going to look for water, they're not going to school. They're not being educated. If they're not being educated, then the world is unable to advance and it is stuck in eternal agony. So today, I am asking for your help, for your contribution in making sure the world does not end. I. Mata Bidastur, I'm offering my hand. Take it and join with so many others in the fight for your home, your land, your life, and the lives of so many others to come. Take action in your community. Fix le leaky faucets and turn off your water when brushing your teeth. With your local community center or even on your own, clean local bodies of water. If there are none, create clubs, organizations, and groups to improve the environment. Have the will, have the want to join this fight. The talk is global, but the action, the action is local. And you are the difference the world needs. My name is Mata Bidastur, and should you want to reach out, I can be reached at moonbeammbd at gmail.com. I am happy to connect with you and make a difference together. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mata. That was really moving and really lovely. I'm so happy to say that I have Vanshika very late at night, but she's here with us in, from Singapore. Vanshika, please come in. Your presentation was superb. Please do come in and tell us how you've taken what you worked on with me almost a decade ago to make your own career. I think that's very important for young people to also realize. Vanshika? Good evening, everyone. Good evening from my side of the world. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be here with all of you. And um, in, in very brief sentences, I'll try and do a good job of telling you um, how is it that my understanding of water began with my work at Parzor Foundation uh, while working with Dr. Shanas Kama. And slowly it gave me certain steps to keep on cultivating that understanding. I think I'm very grateful that um, when I was at Parzor Foundation, the rich oral uh, recordings that uh, the team believed in um, and a certain pursuit of uh, believing in uh, wisdom that can be made, uh, that can be adapted, that can be contextualized. So a constant effort uh, to sort of look at systems of water that came from certain contexts, that came from a certain history, um, the willingness to work with it, the willingness to look at it very realistically in terms of its possibilities and in terms of its limitations, and then see what's the scope of making it workable is something that really appealed to me. So I was fortunate to learn about the DACA system. I was fortunate to learn about the canals, um, and I was fortunate to see across geographical borrowing of water systems from one part of the world to another. So what appealed to me very thoroughly was uh, this notion of lines and boundaries that are telling me that a system is from Iran and a system is from Gujarat. But actually, if you look at the systems, you see that people had the intelligence to look at conditions and take systems with them wherever they go. Um, and I think that's my hope for the world today, which is that um, we need not classify systems uh, based on ancient or modern. We need not classify systems based on this part of the world or another. I think we have a lot to learn from um, each other. We have a lot to learn if we are able to sort of just suspend the idea of borders and think of regions and think of systems and think of different sort of topographies and climates. Um, and that's where my hope lies. So if we have the canals in Iran, um, we have very similar systems to see uh, a little uh, away from Hyderabad in Bidar. Um, and I think there's a beauty of continuity there, but also a very realistic sense that uh, systems are dying. Systems need adaptability. Systems need uh, work, constant work. And um, if there's something that I learned from the Parsi community, it is their entrepreneurial thinking and their entrepreneurial mindsets. Um, and I see that there is a lot of hope to make innovation happen based on systems, based on technologies that could be highly, highly workable for different contexts and for different environments. Um, I went on to work with a small organization um, after Parzor. Then I went and worked with Hyderabad Urban Lab, uh, where I was given the opportunity to further my understanding of water, particularly for service delivery systems in low-income settlements. And what I'd like to share there is that if you learn how water systems work for a particular context, um, I was able to learn some of these tools and even see how they are workable for low-income settlements or see how is it that the thinking of water delivery in low-income settlements pretty much matches how people made uh, paucity to a resource uh, to make water available for them. Um, and through that, I, I was able to cultivate my interest in geography, and I'm currently pursuing geography at this point in time at the National University of Singapore. Um, so having said that, um, I'll just leave the floor open for more questions and also um, encourage the fact that I think there's a lot to learn from your entrepreneurial mindsets. There's a lot to learn from the way um, your community made uh, water available 
from different environments and um, I hope that learning continues. Thank you so much, Vanshika. There are lots and lots of questions. The basic question is where is the Taka system still followed? Uh, I'm answering that it's followed still in Bharuch. Rohintan Jambu Sarwala, who was my mentor about the Taka system and who taught me so much and taught Kavas and Vanshika and all of us so much, unfortunately passed away just a week before the Parliament of World Religions. And uh, yet he is the last person who had seen a Taka built. And he talked to us so beautifully about the Ava uh, songs of Ava and the Garbas of Ava that were danced inside the Taka before they filled it with water. He also told us about what is called curry, which we have discovered is a mixture of alum, etc. But it's also used to seal the cracks in the Taka because a massive body of water, I'm handing it over to Kavas to now explain uh, because a lot of questions are how is it possible to revive the Taka? Where is it followed? Are they experts to construct takas? Does it have to be inside the house? Can, be can it be located outside? And uh, we have Shiva Ravat, formerly of UNESCO, who says, uh, can you share sites where the system of sustainable water management is being used? There's one person missing, Vispi Kasad, who was with us at the Parliament of World Religions. He's adapted the taka system, folks, and he's turned it into a very possible system in multi-stories in Navsari. He's participating in the Guinness Book of World Records, so we couldn't disturb him today. Akavas, could you take over and explain how a voluminous body of water can be kept using a very ancient technology? Thank you. Kavas, you're mute. Sorry. Uh, as you have noticed from the few presentations that have been made, Manchika's presentation and others, uh, Tanka is nothing but an underground water tank. In the olden days, when people used to have huge houses to themselves, they would first construct an underground water tank. This under underground water tank had to be structurally sound to store 30 to 35 to 40,000 liters of water. And uh, the simple system through which a pipe, a pipe network, which would get the rainwater, and this first couple of rainwaters are let to be runoff, so that uh, what you get in the third or the fourth rain would be the water which would be led into the tanka. And uh, this tanka is nothing like uh, uh, other than an underground water tank. And once the water that came into the tanka that was purely sealed, it was pure. One could draw water out of that. There are a few examples available even today in Ahmedabad, in Bharuch. Uh, in the modern day context, it is becoming more and more difficult because as we have already discussed earlier in some of the presentations, uh, not only because of the cost, but because the, the plot sizes are getting smaller and smaller. Also, there is, uh, there is what is called flatted uh, uh, residences, flatted uh, accommodation, where the ownership doesn't remain with an individual. It, it becomes a, like a community ownership. Now, if you look at the history of the water uh, systems in our country, you would find that earlier uh, the water was a community resource and it got destroyed simply because it was made easily available at your doorstep. So, you know, everybody's responsibility became nobody's responsibility. And traditional water systems slowly died. Uh, today, you go into Rajasthan, there are hundreds of cases of neglected uh, community water uh, systems where the water is actually rotting. In fact, they have been, uh, they have been uh, fenced off uh, because they become breeding grounds. So the, the, the balance here is mm, to have a community responsibility vis-a-vis -vis a private responsibility. Uh, the resource is free. Rain water is available. Uh, you have got to use your ingenuity to capture the rain at the right time in the right quantity. 
So what uh, you can do, if not the Taka, you could actually do the rainwater uh, harvesting. Vispi, our friend who is unable to be here, is actually doing that. You know, he, he collects the water and, and he uh, recharges uh, hand pumps and wells which have gone defunct. In other words, he recharges the substrata of water which has gone dry because people have overdrawn the water from there. I hope that satisfies you. Uh, there are some answers that there are still some Boras and Gujarati houses in Baruch, which also probably was from the Parsis. The difference between that, Mayor Mistri was asked the question, is that the Parsi Taka has pure drinking water. There were a lot of tanks of water which could be used for washing and things, which is also very important. But the Parsi Taka is always in the kitchen. And from there, you use the pure drinking water. And of course, it is linked up with water and the whole idea which Karishma explained. But as Vanshika says, and as Matab says, we have to think globally and work locally. And if any of you would like to talk about that, Afrid or Matab or Vanshika, I'm handing it over now to the younger people. Please, come in. Matab, you've been working so much. Afrid, please come in on this. Matab, Matab Dastur, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Um, I don't know what to say. I think it's all, it's in the hands of everybody who wants to help. I think that should you want to help, there is always something you can do. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think it's the same thing over and over. You have to want to do it. You have to want to make the world a better place. You have to want to make sure that the future generations don't die. And if you do, you can always reach out to me, Afrid, Sherna, Kama, Kavas, Kapar, Yavanshika. All of these people, they're so intelligent. They have so much knowledge. They have so much more knowledge than me. And they know what they're talking about. They, they've seen it. They've done it before. Now all they're asking is that more people do it. And I think if we work together, we can build such a huge community and make such a big difference. And I, it's, that's all that we need. We just need people. We need people to want the same thing we do. We want people to want that the world doesn't die. We want people to make a difference, come together to make a difference. I think this is a very important point you're making because as uh, Karishma will say, and before I give it the floor to Afrid, uh, this is a real anxiety. I'm a teacher, I've been teaching for 33 years. And I know that the younger generation, slightly older than you, Mata, because this is the college people I'm teaching, they are actually suffering from depression and anxiety over climate change. And when you look at what is happening and look at the flooding right now in Bombay, I mean, and you're talking about Australia burning, the koala bears, the pathetic pictures we saw of that, and California, and all of this, I think they're right to be anxious. Afrid, would you like to take that up? And then there are some people who raise their hands. Uh, somebody is asking, can Takas, uh, Kavas, can you pick this up as an architect? Can be Takas be constructed in the compound of a house? Yeah, sure. It can be constructed in the compound of a house. Uh, a Taka is actually a, a tank. The, the term Taka is a is from the local lingo uh, from Rajasthan, border of Rajasthan, Gujarat, where uh, it's a very common thing for the tankas to be constructed in the open uh, and, and to capture the limited rain that falls there and to make it go uh, as, as far as possible. Uh, the whole idea is that, you know, the, the rainwater, which is for free, which is abundant, you capture as much of it as you can. And there is a balance between the size that you can afford or the size that you can build and uh, the amount of water that it will hold and it will last. Afrin, can you now just come in, please? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Sharnas. Um, so I wanted to state, you know, um, we have an abundance of water in our world. 
The problem is that the water is not accessible to the people and where people live. Also, um, all of this abundance of water in the oceans and things like that, you need to make sure that you take the water and make it drinkable um, for people. So what we need is more innovation in our world, um, young people trying to come up with more solutions on how we can have drinkable water. One example of this in India is a company called Watermaker. Um, it's run by a lady named Mare. Um, and uh, she has this very innovative idea of making water out of air. Um, because the air is so humid in India, um, she's built these machines that takes water from the air and produces drinking water for, the, for homes, for schools, uh, for communities. She has three different sizes of machinery, um, even a, a small one that you can put in your home that produces water out of air. So um, just like Mare, there are so many other people that have innovate, innovative solutions, ideas that they're thinking of, um, even prototypes. What we need to do is pull up these people and bring these ideas to the forefront so that there are people that have access to this information and can maybe take it up on a larger scale. So Thank you. Thank that's you. what I wanted to add. Thank you. Uh, can we uh, can we have those two people who raise their hands, please? Uh, Mata, can you unmute them? Uh, could you raise your hands again, please? Kurshid? Yeah, hi. This is Kurshid. But it doesn't allow me to do the video because it says the host has stopped the video, but that's okay. All right. I just wanted to make a few points that the word ab is water in Persian, but the word RB is blue in Persian. So even the word blue contains the word water. Uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of follow up on some of the you know excellent points that were made here today. The second thing was that our ears are displayed in the our ears are the prayer, but it's always prayed in daylight. We never worship water after darkness, after sunset. Um, the third, uh, it was discussed that uh, malmal or, uh, you know, muslin cloth is used to filter the water in these takas, but often um, in uh, most homes and, uh, you know, I think even today in some homes, uh, we say junna sadra vapro or use yeah. older sadras, yeah. which are of course made of malmal if made correct. It made in the authentic way. Um, the water cycle was mentioned, which was great because uh, yes, so I, I I also have been mentioning it to the youngsters in our area. By the way, I'm in Chicago and I woke up at six o'clock to attend. So <laughs> I'm super, you, I'm super happy. It's really it's really good. Anyway, my point is that the uh, you know the hundred and one names. So. Uh, I think Karishma mentioned those and uh, their meanings and the water cycle because I'm also a biology teacher. And so, you know, the water cycle itself, we are a very environmentalist religion. We understand the elements and the environments in ways uh, that we don't, uh, we don't quite take as much pride as we should do because we've been doing this for generations and only now has becoming green and becoming environmentally conscious become cool and we've been doing it forever basically so we've been cool before the word cool was invented <laughs> anyway and then the last thing i wanted to add is that in all our seas and uh, in our mitais and in so many ways uh the the um no, actually, I wanted to add two things. Yeah. So the elements of fish and water are always represented. The fish, of course, cannot swim or live without water. So our space always includes a little machi. Yes. Uh, and our mitai always has a, a boy, a mawani boy. Yes. And then, um, like I said, um, the other element that we always have in each and every prayer almost is water. Um, if you do the Nirangdin prayer, there's water. If you do the, you know, you ask any priest, uh, there's always a little um, karasio with water kept on the side. 
uh, and water is also part of milk. And of course, we are very famous for the milk, sugar and milk story, but we also use milk with rose petals and rice and little kunku to put on the bakalyu's head on the birthday. Um, and, you know, that's also liquid water, essentially, it's just milk, you know, which is uh, also a form of yeah, water has forms. And then, of course, the fact that our bodies are made of almost 70% water, you know, uh, we wouldn't have, you know, our blood has water, Every, everything has water. So we've been very, uh, I guess, conscious or aware of water. We just sort of have not, we've, I think where we failed is in uh, passing it on to our future generations, that pride and that importance and that uh, thing that we've always had, but not explained so clearly uh, to our younger generation so that we can take the same pride and be cool and realize that we were cool even before cool was invented. So thank you for this opportunity to just speak a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much for waking up at six o'clock, Kurshid. It must be really cold in Chicago. You're absolutely right. At any auspicious occasion, you put uh, even the chalk on your doorstep will have a little fish because of course the fish is for uh, for also for fertility. And like the pomegranate plant, the fish as the animal of fertility is always there. And a very important point when you spoke about the Karasyo, before we enter the fire temple, even before, after we come home from a long journey, normally you are welcomed with a, you have to wash your hands after the water is revolved around your head and poured on both sides to welcome you in cleanly into a house. And in our fire temples, we wash our hands with the karasio, the small uh, receptacle of water before we say our kasti prayers and go inside. So water, purity, life, and the whole cleansing of the world, which Karishma talked about, is very, very integral. So, so I can imagine you're saying, yes, I can imagine. Thank you so much for being up so early for us. There's another person who wanted to speak. Uh, can we please have that person speaking? Thank you, Kurshid, for sharing. Um, can you please raise your hand? Currently, I only have Vanshika. Vanshika? Yes, that was me, the other person who raised their hand. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to respond to um, to a way of sort of approaching the DACA because I know that there are a lot of questions on the DACA, uh, specifically on the system, where can you have it, how can you go about it. So um, I know that uh, Professor Kavas Kapadia is is the person who will be able to tell us the specifics about where can you fit it in, where is it that you can, how is it that it can come about, so on and so forth. But um, I feel like it's also important to look at the DACA um, as a particular kind of design thought. Um, and if you look at it like that, then you're able to see what is it able to do. Uh, as a design thought, it is a temperature sensitive. It is a locational. It, it is a location sensitive. Um, it is a particular kind of a way in which you have water, which is abundant through rainfall, turned into something that is usable uh, by storing it. Um, in that sense, there was a question on whether this is storage versus reservoir. I think those are very, very, uh, I mean, do, do not, it's, it's possible there's merit in not looking at these two as really diverse ideas. Um, I think it's possible to put them together and do a lot more meaningful things. So um, I find a lot of merit in the fact that, that there were schools in Rajasthan who took in the feature of storage of water very seriously and was able to adapt the tanka to have, say, a tank, which they couldn't put underground, but something like a tank that worked on the floor of their schools because their, school, their schools just had a single floor. Um, in that sense, I think there is a lot of potential to make, con like to collect water and store it into a practice for different places based on 
where you are at, what is allowed, how much is the water that you collect. Another example in which design thinking with storing water became very, very sort of pronounced for me was this competition that was released in Hyderabad very recently, which was won by design thinkers, I think of a first year architecture, like, you know, students who saw that in a low income settlement, there was water that was running off from a slope entirely. And if they could tap onto it, uh, connected to a place where it could be collected, they were able to create staircases on the side of the channel of water flowing downwards, which became actually spaces for children in that settlement or basti to be able to learn, to be able to play. And a lot of water that was collected became a stream and another place of socialization for people in that settlement instead of just going downwards, making life hell for a lot of people and becoming a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Um, the point that I'm trying to make here is that um, there's merit in thinking of system as what it is and seeing if it can be replicated in places or not. Or there is merit in looking at the design principles that the Taka has and see if you can do something with storage. See if you think that well, how Westing can be made doable in precisely the geographies that you're living in, because those context specifics really help in thinking through the system and what's workable and what's not workable. And so I know that this is a lot about individual will and people's will to do things. This is a lot about uh, coming together and doing things, but this is also about deploying a lot of design thought, which is good for the community and good for you. Um, and I think that's another way in which you can make the system relevant for yourself even today. Thank you. I think, I think this is really very important. And uh, we do want to more people, especially young people, to join the AVA project. As Bairam says, it will go on long after us. We want it to go on long after us, which is why we have asked young people to take the lead in this project, just as they've done in Return to Roots. This is another form of Return to Roots. And I think it is ancient wisdom for modern times. There are so many questions here. Uh, please, uh, we've gone well over one hour, so I'll have to stop now, but thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, there is a calendar coming out, which Afrid, before I end and say thank you to all of you, can you just talk about the calendar, please? Because I want that calendar across the world. Can you show it? Okay. Please? Thank you. Sure. Um, it's it's called Parsi Calendar, and uh, it has been published in India as well. But the one that we've published here in North America um, is actually like a, a booklet, and uh, it's made for children. I'm hoping you can see this. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And and it's the Shanshai Calendar done by um, Delson Choksi. Uh, the same lady that talked about the AVA project logo. And uh, we've incorporated some of the special um, AVA days and water days into the calendar as well. And what we've done is um, had it printed in North America and given to all the kids in, in the religion classes across North America. So we handed it out in Canada already and the US shipment just left yesterday. So hopefully people will be getting these calendars very soon. Um, if you would like any of these, I do have a few more copies left and we could always do print another run uh, for next year. So you can contact either myself or Baron and we can get you the calendars. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Can you tell us where we can get them in India? Yes, um, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go. Yes, 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 the Tatra is the source. He, he can. Yeah, get he's actually the on. He's actually on the uh, Zoom meeting, so maybe he can type it in the chat window of where you can get it in India. Hi, Yasdi. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Chennas, I also wanted to say we've got people from California on this call. Oh, wow. I don't know what time it is there, Zareed Bhandara, Herbert Zareed Bhandara, who has been our guiding light in the AVA project as the priest. And uh, there are others also I saw. I think Mayor Amal Saad is there. Maybe you can ask them to say a few words. Hi. Uh, 
Oh, from Moscow There's to... someone from Moscow also. Wow, it must be really cold over there. I can... I'm feeling cold here. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody woke up for Ava. That's a lovely thought. Uh, may I have... Oh, it's 4 a.m., Zareen. Please, please do unmute and talk to us. Can we see you? Can we see you, Zareen? If you're awake enough, or doesn't matter. If you're in your pajamas, we won't uh, be just unmute and say hi to us. Oh, hi, Zari. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having this meeting. It is extremely important that we care for our environment and especially water, because water is going to be our next cold. Yes. Thank you. I know that. Thank you so much. Thank Fair you enough. so much. Yes. Please. Yes, please. Karishma. I want to just highlight that I've also put in a link in the chat box of an excellent presentation at the Parliament of the World Religions, which translated into an article published on Zoroastrians.net, in which Mabit Sahib Zareed Bhandara has explained all the details in depth. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, 3 d for telling us. It's uh, shoppingonline.com for the Parsi calendar. Uh, I think you're going to have lots of demand for it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for those who've woken up at four who are freezing in Chicago and in Moscow. It's been a lovely evening. It's almost two hours and it's flown past and there's so much more to do. Shapna, yes, you can use the taka and you can build on top even 20 stories. That's not a problem. So I think with young Matab, the little Matab and the big Matab in, in Spain and the little Matab in Houston with Vanshika, a young woman in, uh, in Singapore who's worked and seen the foaming lakes of Hyderabad and Bangalore with all the young people over here. Thank you. We are handing on the torch to you. Please keep it burning and keep the water collecting okay thank you good night good morning good everything thank i you. am very grateful to all the participants and to everybody else who has been with us thank you and have a safe and good weekend god bless stay safe thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you thank you thank you everyone thank you Thank you, Shernas. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Baba. Masab. Please say yes. thank you to your teacher also. Yes, yes. I've actually moved to the next class, so I'm in the next class now. Oh, wow. Then you better run. Okay. Thank you, Baram. Thank you, everybody. Bye, bye folks. Bye-bye. Thank yeah, you. Please, please, please send the recording to us. Of course. Of course. We'll be sending it out. Thank you. Thank you. Amazur, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay well.